Thank you very much for joining us for this session. May I invite Carmen Garcia Duro, please, to unmute and commence the proceedings. Thank you. Uh, hello, thank you, thank you, Gabriela. Uh, on behalf of the members of the Joint Initiative for Sustainable Humanitarian Assistance Packaging Waste Management, welcome. I'm Carmen Garcia Duro, Sustainable Supply Chain Alliance Project Manager at the ICRC, and I will be moderating this briefing session. The Joint Initiative is a partnership of humanitarian actors working together to make packaging and humanitarian assistance more environmentally and socially responsible. Our members include actors from across the humanitarian sector, international organizations, NGOs, donors, and academic institutions. Today, we would like to give you a quick introduction to who we are, what we are doing, and how to engage with our work. But first, I will invite three of our partners to tell you for themselves why they are involved in this joint initiative. The first partner is uh, from USAID, Bob Demeranville, who is the team leader for African and Latin American and the Caribbean, and he's the supply chain management division, part of the supply chain management division. So please give the floor to uh, Bob. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Demeranville, uh, and I am the acting team leader for the Africa and LAC region with under the new supply chain management division within the Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance established in June of last year uh, at USAID. This is the combination of OFTA uh, and Food for Peace coming together. I've been with uh, USAID, OFTA, uh, now BHA, 17 years, um, starting in 2004, and uh, really have, um, have really excited about the work that everyone's been doing in the cluster environment, and as well as uh, the work of the HNPW. Um, we have uh, always, as an agency, tried to participate as much as we can into HNPW and all the work there. And the various members of our organization have attended the meetings in Geneva and happy to be engaging this week. I'd like to thank uh, you and all the partners for their commitment. Uh, while we are funding the coordination of this effort, we could make no progress at all without the dedication and enthusiasm of the 15 organizations working in this environment. So why is USAID involved in this joint initiative? Uh, as the humanitarian assistance leaders, USA needs to start uh, leading in environmental sustainability. Managing the packaging that is sent to protect life-saving commodities is a good and tangible first step. That said, environmental challenges, including packaging, waste management, are far too large to address on our own. Therefore, funding the coordination of this joint initiative is a logical and effective way forward toward further environmental responsibility. Our funding and assistance must not contribute to damaging the local environment or the major ocean plastics problems that has gained attention in recent years. This joint initiative can serve as a foundation for additional environmental sustainability challenges. So humanitarian actors need to tackle this challenge in collective and uh, urgently. Yes, we do. We, uh, as an operational donor, need to be in partnership with our different um, implementing partners the packaging that we provide in both in-kind uh, as food and non-food needs to be taken into consideration in, about what the impacts are on operations on the ground. The continued assistance that we are providing with the additional burden of COVID-19 personnel protective equipment and the additional intensity of storms that will require rapid responses means that we need a collective plan for dealing with packaging waste management in the many contexts and uh, in, with assistance needs. So what are USAID's commitment to the joint initiative? Specifically, USAID is committed to funding the coordination of this joint initiative with uh, consultants focused on policy, procurement, and end-of-life waste management. The supply chain management division also has five staff members spending time working on the elements of this activity plan, led by our colleague, Greg Willison, who is our sustainability advisor. Two more ongoing initiatives that feed into the joint initiative are research into clean energy recycling unit and a private sector landscape assessment to uncover how the packaging material can get back into the productive reuse and support local livelihoods. All this effort adds up to nearly $2 million of US government USD funding and we are working with our donor colleagues to find other resources, sources from, uh, which our partners can apply. We are grateful to those 15 organizations that have joined the initiative 
Hope more will do, come with us in this journey to sustainable manage packaging waste, and we look forward to getting down to business of protecting our environment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bob. It takes a bit of time until <laughs> I unmute myself. Um, the next partner is uh, Betika, Deputy Director from WFP Supply Chain Division. So please give the floor to uh, Betika. Thank you, team. Unfortunately, Betty Kai is not available, but Carol Manso can cover her section. If you could please unmute, unmute her team. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Thank you, Carmen. Um, thank you very much. Um, Gabriela, would you be able to share the presentation that I just sent you? just maybe to, to uh, um, uh, facilitate the, the floor. Uh, apologies on, on behalf of, uh, of Betika. She uh, just had like five minutes ago um, uh, an urgent um, call and unfortunately she cannot uh, present uh, for, for, um, for us today. Um, so I will take over. Uh, my name is uh, Carol Monceau. I'm um, the packaging specialist for WFP. Um, so working in the supply chain division. And, and within this session, um, I will update you on what WFP is doing to reduce the environmental uh, impact of its operation and our prior priorities for the immediate uh, future. Um, thank you, Gabriela. So we can go, uh, yeah. Maybe, I don't know if you manage to display on the... Yes, it's there, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the, um, on the next, uh, if you go on the, on the next uh, slide, up, on the next slide, uh, you will um, see, um, yeah, that uh, WFP has uh, since uh, 2017 uh, an environmental uh, policy um, uh, that commits our organization to systematically uh, managing the environmental impact of, uh, of our work uh, to save lives and change lives. And uh, as part of this effort, WFP uh, aims to improve the quality of the packaging um, because the, the first function, um, as everyone knows, of, of, of packaging is really to preserve the food integrity uh, by achieving uh, a good quality and ensuring the safety uh, from uh, sourcing, so from procurement down to beneficiaries, um, considering the, uh, the extremely harsh condition under um, which uh, the humanitarian uh, assistance operates. Um, the waste from uh, humanitarian uh, response activity is one of the most um, pressing environmental challenges uh, of uh, for WFP supply chain. And as many of the country where we work, um, there is a lack of infrastructure infrastructures uh, needed to, to manage the waste uh, sustainably. So this is why it's, it's, uh, it's an important topic and uh, we need to find solution to address uh, this, um, depending on the country where we operate and what is available and how, um, what is the, the, the operation uh, under which uh, we, we work. So this said, um, the opportunities to reduce the impact of packaging on the environment are existing uh, all along the value chain 
So from sourcing of the packaging waste to waste management. So I just yeah, want to emphasize that when we talk about waste management, um, the first function that we, we um, or activity that we should look at is really on the sourcing part, because if we can already decrease the quantity of, of, of uh, material uh, that we use, of course, then we will generate less uh, waste uh, downstream. So in WFP, in, in 2020, WFP used uh, approximately 35 uh, metric ton of packaging material, which represents 1.5% of uh, the total tonnage uh, of food that we procured. And uh, the main um, package, um, packaging material that we use are corrugated board for all the shipping cases, uh, but also the polypropylene woven bags um, and uh, other different type of, of packaging that we use. So that's, yeah, if you want to go on the slide, um, on the slide three. Yeah, exactly, thank you. Um, so in, it is really critical for WFP to show the engagement of on, on sustainable packaging, but we cannot do it alone, of course. And this is why we are engaged with other uh, main players so it's, it's within the, the, with the, sorry, with the lo global logistic cluster, uh, we are part of the joint initiative for sustainable humanitarian assistance packaging waste management um, that was um, what is uh, led by by USAID. We uh, are also working with the International Committee of the Red Cross and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to work uh, with whom we work uh, to find a more sustainable alternative to po po um, polypropylene uh, woven bags. And uh, we are also engaged. Um, we we also engage um, with uh, with the US uh, USID, uh, UNHRD, so other different agencies. We regularly have a discussion to to uh, talk about packaging improvements. And additionally, WFP is also uh, already minimizing its environmental impact by um, looking at different uh, delivery options, such as uh, bulk of um, bulk delivery of cargo in big bags. Or we are also trying to um, to test uh, what we call ATM uh, systems, so to have yeah really bulk um, until um, uh, until the last mile. And uh, also together with USID, we are trialing at the moment a bulk oil delivery. Uh, what remains a, 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 um, a challenge is really on the nutritious food, where we, we have very specific packaging material that are um, there to, to, on the purpose of safeguarding the integrity of the food. Um, and, and where the, the, the recycling or the management of this waste is, is today a challenge. Um, so we, we need to find solution to tackle this. And if you want to move on the last uh, slide, on the slide four, please. Uh, so one of our, uh, the first priority for WFP to work on reducing packaging waste is to define an area of focus in terms of country operational context and packaging material to that get really the operation where we have um, the bigger impact, where we could have the bigger impact. Um, and so for this, we need to understand where do we deliver uh, most of our food and uh, what kind of, of packaging we use in, in what country. Um, so the, the, the very first step is, will be to organize a system. Um, we see, well, say, let's say on the strategy strategy part, we 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 need uh, to to also organize a system to collect the packaging waste, um, because uh, whatever the material is at the end, um, we we need in any case we will need to collect them um, firstly, and uh, the packaging waste can uh, be either. Yeah, could be either reused uh, locally, uh, recycled via local recycler, which is already done in some countries in, uh, in West Africa um, with some of our packaging, or at least be disposed in a safer and controlled infrastructure, which is not always the case. And the aim should be also to reduce and optimize our packaging material consumption at source, as I was mentioning at the beginning, because it's really where we can really target. Uh, so either reducing, but also uh, optimizing the design so that potentially downstream, we can also recycle them. Um, an important approach is, of course, also to reduce the fast food loss, because we know that um, because the, the food loss is has a, a, a um, a greater carbon footprint uh, on, on 
more than uh, only um, when we talk about uh, packaging waste. So the, it's, it's very important to, to tackle the food loss. And uh, lastly, um, so our other uh, efforts include the strengthening um, environmental and social sustainability parameters in WFP tenders and long-term agreements. We aim also at developing material and training the staff um, in, in the field, uh, providing implementation support by experts uh, embedded in the WFP supply chain division and environmental unit and establishing also an annual carbon footprint um, of contracted surface and shipping uh, freight. Lastly, um, the we, WFP signed uh, a partnership with uh, a packaging supplier called Mondi Group. And this is uh, an opportunity to more deeply look uh, into packaging waste management. This will start with an in-depth uh, review uh, of the Aziz situation within WFP to identify a potential area uh, for improvement in the speci very specific context of, of WFP. So thank you very uh, much all for your intention. Uh, once again, I want to apologize for uh, Betty not being able to, to talk uh, for us uh, today, uh, but uh, um, I hope you, you, get the, you got the sense of, uh, of the WFP engagement on, on, the, on, on tackling um, the packaging waste management. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Carol. Let me introduce the next partner who works for Save the Children, Jeremy Robinson, who is the Supply Chain Director. Uh, please give the floor to uh, Jeremy. Thanks. Uh, hopefully, can you hear me OK? Good. Um, so. Um, hello, I'm Jeremy Robinson. I'm the director of supply chain for Save the Children. You know, we are very proud to be part of this initiative. So uh, it's great to have the opportunity of, of talking about, you know, why we want to be involved with this, uh, why we need to work together on this really important initiative uh, for the sector and what we're doing to contribute towards the objectives that have been set from this initiative. So in an organization that is serving you know uh, in over 120 uh, countries uh, the children that we basically deliver programs to sustainability is is one of our key priorities um, as a movement um you know so, so that's that's why save you know why why are we involved from a supply chain perspective well you know supply chain sits between the needs of the organization and the supplier's ability to, to service those needs. So um, in a recent CDP uh, report, it was identified that uh, supply chains actually have over five times the impact on uh, sustainability from an environmental perspective uh, than the internal operations of an organization. So, you know, that's why functionally we should be involved in, in this initiative. Um, you know, we can implement the actions that uh, we've agreed uh, from a sustainability perspective and we've spent a lot of time assessing what the actions are what priorities we need to put into them and, and have a very clear action plan moving forwards um, which sort of brings me on to the you know why do we need to do this together well you know save the children is just one actor in this sector you know we we need to make sure that we're covering all geographies we need to make sure that we're covering all demographics in terms of tackling this challenging area together. It, it, Save the children can't do this on ourselves. You know, the, the other component bit is that as we drive our agenda to uh, improved uh, sustainability, we touch many of the suppliers that are the same suppliers that many other actors in the um, in this sector touch. So, you know, we, we need to do this together. We need a consistent message to interface with suppliers. Uh, and to take that to the geographies that we work uh, within. You know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, as, uh, as they say. Um, you know, what, what are our commitments? Um, you know, Carol obviously shared some of the examples of what WFP have done. You know, we ourselves have a, a very clear environmental policy. As I said, we have some uh, very clear actions in terms of an assessment we've done to improve our sustainability across our supply chains 
And most recently, um, all of our uh, supply chain teams in conjunction with all of our country leadership uh, have, have signed up to a sustainability pledge where, whereby we are focused on social, economic and environmental uh, improvements in our sustainability um, agenda and getting everybody to sign up to that, that we can then take to suppliers as a consistent message and get suppliers to work towards that end objective is, is really important uh, for us. We've baselined our CO2 emissions and have a series of actions that we are putting in place uh, to, to address you know, our current baseline and, and reduce the emissions across, uh, across Save the Children. Um, and we, we are doing some, you know, uh, very, very tactical things, but, but moving the dial forwards all of the time is really important. We've got our uh, core relief item global suppliers signing up to, uh, you know, the, the objectives that we've set in uh, reusable packaging uh, by not using uh, plastics, by, you know, moving from polystyrene to reusable uh, forms of, of packaging. Um, we, we're working with the shelter cluster on non-plastic tarpaulins. So we're already starting to make some small moves, you know, towards, uh, you know, how we can actually uh, deliver these improvements. And we're really excited about working with all actors uh, in the sector and connected with the sector uh, to, to, to really move forwards on this, uh, on this initiative in, in, in terms of where we're trying to get to. So very happy for the opportunity for Save the Children to be involved in, and as part of that. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. Let me introduce Mandy George from the Joint Initiative for Sustainable Humanitarian Packaging Waste Management. Please give the floor to uh, Mandy. Thank you very much, Carmen. Um, and thank you so much to all of our partners um, uh, who have been speaking with us here this morning and for all of our participants for joining us. Um, so I just wanted to quickly give you an overview of um, our aim and approach in the joint initiative and then a few examples of some of the activities um, that we are carrying out. Um, so our, our aim is really to minimize the environmental impact of packaging, um, but also to look at how we can turn it into opportunities for those we assist. Um, and how are we doing this? So our approach is um, multi-pronged. Um, firstly, we are uh, taking a circular economy approach. So looking across um, and at e each and every step of the supply chain. Um, we are also have a, have a big focus on coordination. Some of our partners have just mentioned the importance of that. Um, together, we can really increase our impact and find collective solutions. Um, we really wanna change this narrative um, from um, only waste uh, to opportunities, uh, waste to value, et cetera. Um, and also focus on being good environmental stewards. So taking responsibility for our packaging and packaging waste in the sector. Um, we are um, also looking at both bottom up and top down approaches. Um, actors at the operational level really need to be able to implement solutions um, while others in decision making roles need to be able to provide um, tools and resources to do this. Um, and finally, raising awareness. Um, we have quite a strong communications component of the joint initiative um, and we want to make this challenge and potential solutions more visible uh, to encourage engagement. Um, and we really do charter our path collaboratively. Our decisions are made um, by our members and activities are uh, led by our partners, um, members, um, and these really are our strength. Um, working collaboratively is very key as we've heard some of our partners mention earlier today. Um, so I want to talk you through our approach with a few examples of activities um, as we look across um, a circular economy sort of approach. Um, Firstly, on the um, policy and advocacy side. So first, we will be looking at analyzing the humanitarian assistance supply chain policy landscape. Um, and then after that, seeing what opportunities there are for standardizing it. Um, we also want to look at some very practical guidance on policy related issues um, that affect humanitarian assistance, for example, um, on international and national policies governing plastic use, for example, plastic bans, um, relevant Basel Convention regulations, transboundary movements, et cetera. 
And so USAID is collaborating with the UNEP OCHA Joint Environment Unit to lead this work um, with many of our stakeholders participating in this. Um, secondly, on the packaging data and evidence front, well, we can't improve what we don't fully understand. So this work stream is really critical to increase our evidence base of current humanitarian packaging, um, both in terms of scale of use and also environmental impact uh, to inform the full life cycle. Um, so for this, we'll start with a sector-wide environmental impact and scale analysis of main humanitarian packaging items um, and materials. Um, so basically like a sector-wide baseline, which will be led by WFP. And we'll also be looking at a life cycle or a few different life cycle assessments, uh, most likely um, for some of the highest volume packaging items um, also kicked off uh, by WFP, which Carol mentioned earlier on. Um, on the procurement front, so we aim to really improve, standardize and harmonize global procurement specifications uh, through providing suppliers and humanitarian procurement staff with um, guidance tools to be able to do this. Um, so some examples of this are, for example, putting together a guidance note on best pa packaging practices um, for environmentally sustainable procurement um, targeted at procurement officers, um, looking at how we can improve um, specifications and tender contracts, um, as well as trying to improve how we coordinate on this topic through setting up an information sharing um, coordination mechanism, um, specifically for our procurement. Um, so we're collaborating with um, the Danish Refugee Council and IOM to lead or, or co-lead some of these activities, again, with participation from many of the stakeholders. Um, on the design production distribution side, um, we are looking at, so how can we design, produce and distribute packaging in a way that minimizes plastic and reduces the overall environmental impact of the packaging? So for this, we aim to make both um, information on the sustainable packaging technologies and materials available through a catalog of options, as well as some R&D to reevaluate the design of some of the most um, common packaging products across the sector uh, to increase sustainability. And last, but certainly not least, uh, looking at end of life uh, management, end of life waste management, um, so this output really is about strengthening locally tailored sustainable end of life waste management solutions in humanitarian operations um, through better access to tools and data. Um, so this really does include the vision of seeing packaging as more than just waste, um, presenting opportunities for assistance recipients. Um, and some of the activities that we'll be conducting under this um, include a mapping of available waste management infrastructure in operating countries. Um, and understanding market-based opportunities for a secondary use of packaging. Um, we'll also be working on a tool to assess packaging waste management in the field, which will be built into the Nexus Environmental Assessment Tool um, with a collaboration with the um, UNEP Orchard Joint Environment Unit. And um, some of the other activities I just mentioned will be led uh, by WFP um, USAID and, and with, again, strong participation from our partners. Um, so how can you get involved? Um, many of the activities I've just mentioned, um, we have um, sub working groups set up for them. Um, we're looking for more partners to join us. Please do get in touch. Let us know if any of those have resonated with your work. There are many great initiatives happening across the sector. We'd really like to hear about them. Um, we also are very keen to make this a multi donor um, initiative um, and collectively explore additional funding opportunities. Um, if that's of interest, please do let us know. Um, join our events, our mailing list, and, and help us spread the word. Um, so we're looking always for more information, resources, um, case studies, examples of good practice. Um, please do share these with us um, because we know that there are many, many out there. And we have a quarterly newsletter as well. Um, you can check the link in the chat um, to our last one and also how to sign up um, to the next edition. Um, we'll be having social media campaigns um, coming up that we'd love it if you could help to share through your channels. Um, and yeah, just get in touch if you'd like any more information as well. Um, on the final slide, you'll have um, my contact details and some other USAID colleague contact details as well. So thank you. Thank you, Amandi, for the overview and to all our speakers for sharing why you are involved in this joint initiative. 
If you would like to continue this conversation, we'll be hosting a technical session on Friday from 4.15 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. during the um, hum Humanitarian Network Partnership Week and Global Logistic Cluster Annual Meeting. Some links to resources and mailing lists are popping up in the chat. We hope you stay in touch and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you all for joining us and joining the rest of the sessions. Goodbye from all the joint initiative team and members. Thank you. <laughs>